Hello students. Today I am going to discuss the second part of dialecto state chapter of class 12. In the first class, we discuss what is electric charge and two very important properties of electric charge. Number one, quantization of charge. Number two, conservation of charge. We also discuss what is induction of charge. Induction of charge is the last thing we discuss. So I want to repeat induction of charge and then I want to proceed further. So let me discuss what is induction of charge once more. Let me consider a conductor here. Say so this is one conductor. It may be of any shape size, uh, there will be no issue. This conductor is neutral, meaning total number of proton and electron in it is same. No electron is transferred from this one or no electron is added to this conductor. So initially charge present on this conductor is zero, meaning total charge in the conductor is zero. Now let me place one charge object near to my conductor. Say for example, this charge object is negatively charged. How to make negatively charged object? Simple, we have to add few electrons to this conductor. If you add few electrons to this conductor, we can uh, do it by rubbing. If you rub suitable materials, then electrons from one gets transferred to other. Now, this conductor is carrying negative charge. I'm placing this conductor near my neutral conductor. I want to develop charge in this conductor. Because of this negative charge, all the electrons of this conductor gets repelled. You know, similar charges gets repelled. So, electrons will be on the far side. In the near side, there is a deficiency of electrons. So, it will develop positive charge. As a whole, negative charge develop at the right end and positive charge develop at the left end will be exactly same. Their value exactly equal, so total charge is still zero. Now, I am connecting this side to earth by a very good conductor. In the last class, we disc discussed this is the symbol for earth connection. Now, as this negative charge continues to repel this electron, that electron will go to ground. Anyway, that electron goes to ground, meaning this is now carrying only positive charge. So if you remove this connection, if this connection is removed after uh, keeping in contact for some time, now this conductor, meaning this one, becomes positively charged. You can remove this conductor now. So this is the idea how we can produce SARS by using induction method. I hope you get the idea already uh, this one once discussed in the last class. The last class uh, video is available uh, in YouTube in my channel Ronan's Physics Point. So you can uh, look at the video once again if you want. Now we can uh, create SARS by uh, this kind of way, actually uh, SARS uh, is created indirectly. We can also think of uh, a situation of this kind, say for example, this is one SARS object, this is one SARS object, say for example, this is positively charged. How to create positive charge? Remove few electron from this. Now. From this charge object at some distance, not uh, in contact, at some distance, say two different conducting object place in contact, two different conducting object place in contact. Clear? Yeah? Because of this positive charge, electron of these two conductor gets attraction as they are conductor, electron will move. So electron will come to the closer side from both. Now the other side as deficiency of electron becomes positive charge. Exactly equal amount of positive charge as negative charge developed in the first one. Now, if somehow separate 
these two by using non-conducting material just separate them in that case this the first one becomes negative charge negatively charged the second one becomes positively charged be careful you should be separate them by using a sufficient amount of force because as this is negative and this is positive there is always an attraction so if you want to separate you have to apply a force exactly uh, equal or greater than the force of attraction between them now if you place these two conductors separately they will develop uh, respectively negative charge and positive charge so this is another way so in that way also we used the idea of induction so in that way we can develop charge in a conductor it is continuation from the last class i hope no difficulty in that now let me proceed further uh, to the law by which we can calculate force between two point charges the law is coulomb's law let me write the spelling for you coulomb's law you already know coulomb's law from your normal class 10 syllabus now what that coulomb's law says if two point charges present be careful it should be point charges not big size object if two point charge object present say q1 and q2 if they are separated by distance r then the force of attraction or repulsion where i am saying attraction and repulsion if similar charges they will repel if opposite charges they will attract now there are uh, electrostatic forces attraction or repulsion we will decide by looking at the nature of the charges first of all the value of the force the force is directly proportional to product of their charges this is the statement of coulomb's law he got it by observation the force is also proportional inversely proportional to square of the distance between the two charges be careful it is valid for two point charges only to make them equal we need a constant so by using a constant what kind of constant required we will discuss the force is now given by an equation of this kind the force is equal to a constant multiplied by q1 q2 by r square now what is this constant here this requires discussion now this constant whatever we are looking at uh, here is dependent on the medium between the two charges so this constant is not universal look at initially one similar format is available in gravitation if you look at newton's law of gravitation a similar format available force is proportional to in that case product of their masses inversely proportional to the square of the distance in gravitation also we use a constant in gravitation i'm just saying for more reference in gravitation the formula was like this in gravitation the formula was like this f equal to z m1 m2 by r square you already know this one in that case whatever z this is called universal constant universal gravitational constant rather why universal gravitational constant because in that case irrespective of the medium between the two masses or two point masses the force is always same in case of electrostatic here it is not same force between uh, two point charges depends on the medium between the two point charges just let me give you an example say for example two charged particles are kept in air at some distance say force between them calculated now imagine a situation same two charged particle at the same distance considered and in between now say water present because of presence of water in between force between them becomes less by nearly 80 times meaning in different medium force is different so the constant is dependent on medium just initially for the first case for air or vacuum meaning either air present or no medium present in that case that constant is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not the constant is 
1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 4 is a number, pi value you know. What is epsilon naught is a new thing for you. Let me explain. Epsilon naught is called absolute permittivity. It is called absolute permittivity of free space. Free space meaning air or vacuum. Value of this epsilon naught is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. I'm repeating it that constant in different medium is different in air or in vacuum that constant is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught what is epsilon naught it is called absolute permittivity value of this epsilon naught is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 what is the unit of uh, this epsilon naught no need to memorize you can very easily identify how let me use this equation of force equation of force with this constant which is just calculated 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square from here we need epsilon naught so let me write so let me write epsilon naught here it becomes 1 by 4 pi f then q1 q2 by r square as it is present now let me write dimension 4 pi is a number dimensionless force The unit is Newton as 1 by f. I am writing Newton to the power minus 1. Q1, Q2 are charges. So I am writing Coulomb square. What is R? Distance. So I am writing meter square. But in denominator, so m to the power minus 2. So unit of this one is n to the power minus 1, c to the power 2, m to the power minus 2. So this is the unit of epsilon naught better called absolute permittivity i hope no difficulty in that now once this is known we can calculate force between two point charges now be careful this law in this format f equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square is valid for only two point charges not for big size object by chance big size object present we must take help of calculus how to use calculus we will discuss if by chance the medium between the two charges is not air or vacuum in that case that constant clear for a medium for a different medium i am looking at not air or vacuum for different medium that constant is either written in this format 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught k or 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught with epsilon r. This k is called dielectric constant of a medium. This k is called dielectric constant. I am writing it. Dielectric constant. This K for different medium is different. Just I am discussing K for water is 80. What is epsilon R? It is also magnitude uh, of same magnitude. Epsilon R is called absolute permittivity. Sorry, relative permittivity. Epsilon naught was absolute permittivity. This epsilon naught was absolute permittivity whose value is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. Newton to the power minus 1, Coulomb square, meter to the power minus 2. This epsilon r is relative permittivity. It is relative. Relative permittivity. Permittivity. Previously that was absolute permittivity. This is absolute permittivity. As it is relative, it is uh, unitless, dimensionless. Clear? So we today discuss what is Coulomb's law and how to use this Coulomb's law that I am going to show in uh, my next video. Thank you. Thank you, student.